All right, it's July 7th, and this is the video like takes 30,000 to a million. Finally making some ground here. I'm going to take you through the account, show you all my positions, uh, some of my future trades. And I want to talk about a little bit uh, about Apple and its growth, but not just Apple in specific, but any company that's growing with larger amounts than it seems possible. So I'm going to go over that. If you would want to skip to that, you can just uh, fast forward until you see my face blown up like this. That's when I'm going to start talking about it. But first, going into the account to see the positions. I'm at 184, 147, which is a little bit more than $5,000 more than I had yesterday in the account. So that's good news. Um, I'll go over the performance in the week monthly charts as well but first I want to share with you all the positions starting with the options you can see here that I sold an Apple call for 140 well, for 149 which hopefully doesn't hit but anyways I'm gonna scroll down through here you can pause the video at any pl uh, point to try to figure out the exact position and uh, all the information you might need is contained within this little box um, the, the Chinese ADRs are doing really well. Um, by the way, I think they're even in the green over the overnight here. I think I think Hong Kong's open right now. Uh, yeah, okay, they'll be. They're doing all right so far. They'll probably open in the green. Uh, even though Nasdaq's in the futures um, in the markets are red by like 0.4 percent. Alibaba's doing okay. Okay, now these are my stock positions, my equity positions. Really, I only have like four main positions at the moment, which is these top four. Apple Realty Income, Mainstream Capital, and Goldman Sachs. I'm looking to get rid of Paramount once it reaches about $30, if it does. Smith & Wesson once it reaches $15, if it does. And Didi, I'm just keeping for kicks. Right now, uh, I just wanted to find out what happens when it gets delisted, and it's just... It went over the counter as expected, but I can only sell them through Robinhood. I cannot buy them. I cannot buy. See, it says you can only close your positions, you can't open them. That's fair enough. Now, this is the investment account uh, investing tab. I'm sitting at one, I'm sorry, at 35.47 leverage, which is about 71% levered up. These are my positions by total return and these are by equity so um, Apple and then Goldman Sachs Apple's comprising uh, one hundred and twenty one thousand dollars in my account that's really big that's almost all of it um, but you know obviously a portion of that is borrowed depending how you view it okay now time to look at the chart performances so because today was a nice plus three percent day it skewed everything in my favor quite a bit. Um, so I'm uh, beating the market today by a little bit, so I'm really happy about that. The week performance was 7.76% or $13,000 or thereabouts. Month performance still in the red by almost 2%. Three months is in the green by 2%. One year, 12% up. Remember this number here because we're going to compare it to the S&P and we'll see how it's doing. So if you put your money in the SPY, S&P 500, you'd be up 1.23% today. On the week, you'd be up 3%. One month, you'd be down 6.53%. No bueno. Three months, you'd be down 13.33%. And here's the big one. If you invested in the S&P 500 over the last year, year on year, you'd be down 9.45%. 9.45, one year. Look at this. One year, 12.23. I'm super happy to report this. This is great, great news. Um, mostly, the overperformance in the recent months has come through the because of the Chinese ADRs, but I paid the price earlier uh, in the year when I was trying to, I was scaling into like, you know, JD and Alibaba and, and VIP shops and stuff. And there was just, I was just bleeding like crazy. I was losing to the market and did not feel good. So as soon as they popped, these stocks, as soon as they popped, I sold quite a bit of them. I only kept uh, the leap options 
to kind of hopefully gain some of the capture some of the upside in the Chinese stocks as they're um, rebounding off this ex these extreme lows. Um, so that's that's why I'm outperforming right now. If you want to see the old time chart, I don't like to show it, but I will show it. Um, the reason I don't like to because I always have to say that I started investing in August 28, 2018, which is about here. And um, that's why the chart looks so flat beforehand. So I have to disclose that every time. Uh, but anyway, doing pretty well on the old time chart as well. All right. Now, I want to share with before I talk about Apple, I want to share um, one piece of crazy news that I stumbled on that came on my news feed here. Which is this article here about Elon. I don't like to talk about Elon too much because everybody talks about him. But I just thought this was a little bit nutty. Like this this dude apparently had uh, twins with his executive. Um, what's her name? Like Z Z Zillis? So um, he had twins with his Neuralink executive Siobhan Zillis. <laughs> he didn't even tell anybody about it or anything. He kept it secret. <laughs> so this dude has twins that he wanted to rename and and put their uh, last name as their official name. This is uh, pretty interesting. Now, these children were born just before Musk and his former partner, musical artist Grimes, had a child in December. So that's pretty crazy. So that means he banged uh Siobhan and then he banged Grimes like shortly afterwards got them both impregnated um interesting interesting guy he definitely does he does well uh with the uh impregnations so that's good for him I just thought that was really funny I don't know why I think it's funny I mean it's great more kids whatever that's awesome but um it's just really interesting so anyways moving on what I want to talk about is um, why it's okay and why it's normal for stocks to grow to seemingly like impossible sizes. So we're going to look at first um, the Apple graph, Apple stock graph here, okay? And it always looks crazy. It always looks like it's in a bubble or something like that. And it looks, first, before I even talk about it, um, I don't understand why the volume was so much higher back in 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That just seems a little crazy. But anyways. Uh, the, oh, I, I, I think I know why. Because as they split the stock, they probably quadrupled the, the volume amounts from back then. Cause so this is a money wise. Uh, this makes a little more sense now. Okay. But anyway, it always looks like it's in a bubble, but... It's been looking like it's in a bubble since, you know, the 2000s, early 2000s or something, or since the 1990s. Um, if you zoom out a little bit, let's take a look at this these peaks. So the peak in September 1, 2021, we'll look at the peak in January and August 31st, and this one here in 2020, February 6th. So all of them look exponential and all of them corrected, but look at this, right? Okay, yes, it looks, looks like it's in a bubble, correct, fine. Looks like it's in a bubble, all right, correct, fine. How about this one here? Looks like it's in a major, major overstretched bubble, and it corrected, but guess what? It kept on scoring all-time new highs in the years to come. It's crazy, right? What about this one? Looks like it's in a bubble, and it was. It corrected, but it was nowhere near the all-time high. This is just a pit stop. So this is 79.90. Uh, okay. And same thing here. You can make that argument. That this was overextended and it was. And it correct. This is at 56. But the thing is, it takes a breather. And then it keeps going up. Now, I want to talk about more... Um, I don't know how like, to manipulate this graph, honestly. <laughs> but what I'm more concerned about is... It's market cap is 2.37 trillion dollars and one might think like how is that impossible how does company get to be valued that much like how can i create that much value well 
there's a few ways, okay? There's a few ways that um, the stock price can climb this high. Part of it is, yes, the market cap, like, the increase in the under, like, business, okay? So, for example, yeah, they're selling more phones. They introduce new products, right? Every time they introduce more a new product other than the phone and the Mac, they're adding basically another business on top of that. Like, how many laptops are you going to sell? Well, that's a whole new business. That's like, oh, it has its own revenue. It has its own profitability, etc. So it's it valued in the marketplace at, I don't know, how many billion dollars, right? So let's take, uh, you know, another product and another product. And you're just adding businesses into Apple. And on top of growing the already existing businesses. Now, what I want to look at here and show you is the list of products and you can think of each product as a separate business they have that adds on it's it's the graph on the left here current hardware right so all this air tags they introduced air tags fine even if it's not a billion dollar business i don't know how much revenue it, it generates and what profitability it has but um since in the it's it already has its own ecosystem so it's coming in with a little bit of premium maybe let's call it a billion dollar business even 500 million whatever it's added onto the market cap um you know you got apple tv okay you got the apple watch series all the apple watches right i mean how big of a business are those they're super popular they're like eliminating out competing all traditional watches by a, a large margin it's probably the most over you know most sold watch in worldwide I don't know that for a fact, but I bet it is. Okay, now let's take a look at another HomePod Mini, right? Those are pretty big. Probably, in, in, you know, they're not the biggest in the markets, but let's just move on. Okay, um, you got iPads, right? We're forgetting about the iPads. Like iPads, a whole another separate, you know, billion plus dollar business. I don't know how many billion, but you got, you know, you got the iPad, the Mac Mini, the Mac Pro, Mac Studio, all different versions. And all these products just kind of grow the pie. They don't necessarily cannibalize their their own um, customer base. They they grow the pie normally, and the customer buys multiple of these products as well. So um, they all work together. So a lot of Apple Apple users are very ha happy buying multiple products. How about this? Okay, how about this is uh, uh, when it comes to adding new businesses, the App Store. I mean, it's huge. It's such a huge money generator. They collect like 30% of or something of every app. I don't know the exact percentages, but it's irrelevant for the sake of the argument of every app purchase. Um, what about App Arcade? They just created an entire gaming company uh, out of like just putting together some software de developers. So that's another, I don't know how many dollars worth of a business. Apple Business Essentials. I just read that they charge like $4 to 20 something dollars per month for apple business essentials or something i don't know i just briefly skimmed through the article but it, it doesn't matter what the number is the point is they just created another business to on top of their ecosystem apple card they're now a financial company right they got they're doing finance i mean they're going into credit consumer credit right they're collecting interest and all that how much is a credit card company worth you know what i mean it's huge money so we've got apple fitness you got apple one apple music right I mean, I looked up at how big Spotify is. Apple Music is like a third to a half or something like that of, of Spotify. I mean, Spotify is worth currently only $20 billion. Let's, let's say Apple Music's worth 10. That's just 10 extra billion dollars just like that. Just just by putting together some contracts and some, you know, some software and whatever um, to mimic that of, of Spotify or what have you. Yeah, all right. They had to work on it for quite a while. Oh, boom. That's $10 billion right there. 10 billion is probably worth you know the amount of time that these software developers spent figuring this thing out um you know they got all kinds of stuff here I icloud right how much money are they making at icloud a storage thing it's bas basically no overhead so add that on top of the market cap and so all these things okay take all these things and then look at this all right boom this is super important for the stock price itself. So not only are the uh, underlying business growing, not only are they adding on top of uh, businesses on top of their ecosystem that are worth I don't know how many billions of dollars on top. So that's two two levers of exponential growth, and then we have a third. Take that and multiply the the growth by two. Uh, yet another exponential force, which is 
shares outstanding reduction. Since 2012, they've basically, they've almost half their shares, right? They almost have. So if you own, what that means is if you owned one, one stock of um, Apple, now you own double the ownership that you did like 10 years ago. It's equivalent to owning two stocks. So that's kind of how it works. And that's getting reflected into the price. So it's a way to manipulate the price. Um, you know, it, it doesn't always work because the money has to come from somewhere. Right, it comes from like you know, um, they can borrow the money, uh, they can get, take it from cash flow, whatever. But the point is that your percentage of ownership in the under in the enterprise value doubles. Okay, so that's how the stock price is usually uh, going up in such a kind of like exponential manner. That's how Apple's been able to return such big returns over uh, a long period of time. And they're still looking like they're in great health. This it still looks great. Like look at these charts. They have, you know, they have some good years, some bad years, but overall, they're increasing their revenue. They're increasing their earnings, and company is doing just great. So I'm a big fan of the company. I think they're doing a great job uh, with their finances, and I just want to kind of do a little overview as to why the stock price is climbing and why it's going to continue to climb. And uh, you can extrapolate some of these things to other businesses. Like what you can do and what I'm trying to do is try to figure out, okay, what businesses have these characteristics? What businesses spawn, you know, other businesses from within the company or at least they acquire them and add them to their, to their existing like ecosystem or infrastructure and have them add additional value that reflects then into the market cap and stock price. And uh, some of them that I can think of are Alibaba, um, for one. That's why I have some Alibaba leaps. But unfortunately, it's a Chinese company, so it's quite a bit risky. And um, But I, I want to hear what you have to say. Like, What are some companies that create businesses from within themselves that add to the valuation of the company? So uh, give me some ideas. All right, that's all I got for you today. I'll make, hopefully make another video tomorrow. Peace out.